Good day and salutations, my friends. Today, you may be wondering, why are you wearing your headset? And that is because it relates to a very important topic that we're going over today, and that is how to make your stream audio sound professional. And when I say stream audio, I'm more specifically talking about your microphone. Now, as a former videographer for a few different marketing companies, I'm no stranger to audio and how it works and how to adjust it so it sounds more professional and appealing to a viewer's ears. So I figured I'd take what I've learned in the past and implement it in today's video to kind of help some of you out who may know nothing about audio. So this is going to be more of a beginner's guide slash intro level to audio. And another reason I feel like this video is so important is because in the past working for those companies, I would record the video, record the audio, take it back to my desk and edit it. And that's the beauty of it is nothing's really done live. So any mistakes that may have happened, anything that may have been recorded wrong, I can fix that in post-production when editing. However, when it comes to streaming, everything's done live. Your viewers that you're getting are all there live with you. And if there's something going wrong with your audio, it's too low, it's too loud. There's a bunch of noise in the background. That's all being caught live, viewed live, and you can't go back and change it. Best you can do is adjust on the fly and fix the issue. However, the damage is already done. So today I'd like to help you minimize those risks of going live and having bad audio by applying a few of these techniques and things to look out for when adjusting settings in your streaming software. Now for today's video, I will be working inside Treamlabs OBS. However, if you're using a different streaming software, these methods still apply accordingly so you can still follow along just fine. So without further ado, let's get into our first point of the day, and that is talking about your microphone positioning. Now, when working with those marketing companies, the general rule of thumb was getting the microphone as close to the subject's mouth without actually having it visible. Obviously, the streaming world is much different than the professional video and film world where in streaming, it's acceptable to see a streamer's mic, and in film, you don't want to see the mic. This distance I have right now is probably a good acceptable distance for it to be. It's about like literally I can fit my fist right here and that's good. Another thing you want to pay attention to is don't make it go under your chin. It's under this. I'm talking out here. I'm not talking to my mic. You want to make sure you're talking to your mic, not over your mic. So by moving it out from under my neck right here is now in front of my face. I'm talking down to my microphone. And of course, this is going to sound better than if I were to have it down here by my chest, under my chin when I'm playing games and it's not as clear as it would be if I have it up here in front of my face, like I said. But just make sure it's not too far away from your mouth to where we can barely hear you or it sounds a little distorted and make sure it's not rubbing up against your mouth to where we are hearing all the bristles from your beard if you have a beard. Now the next thing that we're going to talk about is filters. Now whereas with your mic that was more of physical positioning, now we want to jump into your streaming software and through your streaming software we'll get more technical. So as you see I have Streamlabs OBS already open here because I am recording through it. Right over here where it says my microphone, I have the AT2020 USB Plus version by Audio-Technica. I love this microphone. I recently made a video about different kinds of microphones that I feel would be great for streaming. I talked about a budget version, I talked about an expensive version, but that's professional and also a mid-tier version, which is the one I'm currently using right now. If you want to go check out that video, I'll leave it linked above. But like I said, I am using the AT2020. And as you can see in your mixer here, you can go to the settings right next to where it has your microphone and click on that. And then after you click on that, you'll see a tab where it says filters, and then you would click that. Now, as you can see, I have three filters that I am currently working with. We have noise gate, limiter, noise suppression. Let's jump into our first filter, and that is noise gate. And starting off here, I'm going to hide each one of these filters and now you can hear a little bit of a difference in the audio and actually before i do that i need to go into my overall settings for my mixer and turn on my monitor and output so i can hear what is happening with you so going back into the filters we're going to be diving into the first one and that is noise gate i'm going to be trying to be explaining what these are the best i can assuming you know nothing about audio and the technicalities behind it. And right off the bat, you can see after I've gotten rid of all these filters, if I just stop talking, look over here to the left to my audio levels. I'm not saying a word, yet my microphone is still picking up background noise. So 
that just goes to show the importance of using these filters because it can potentially hurt your stream's audio. So basically you can think of a noise gate as a gate and going up to a certain loudness, that gate won't let any noise through. So right now I have it set to negative 30, which is where it would open the gate. And really for the sake of this video, we'll really only pay attention to open because that's when it starts to let your audio through and that's what's important here. So as you can see right now, like I said, without me talking at all, look at the audio levels. It's currently letting noise through. The microphone is picking up something in my room, something in my house, maybe something outside. It is a little bit windy right now. And although it may not be super apparent right now in your headphones or if you're listening on speakers, this could potentially be an issue if that noise got louder over time. And for a viewer's experience, this gets annoying. They only want to hear you and your gameplay, not your dog barking, not the wind in the background, not your fan. So just watch what happens when I turn this noise gate on. Watch those audio levels when I'm not talking to see what happens. Boom. Already took care of it just with that one filter. So just to go further into it and show you what I'm talking about and why this is important, say you play on keyboard and mouse or you're even on controller and you're a little bit louder on your controller, you're smacking those button rounds, throwing the joysticks around, just click and clacking, all that kind of stuff. Listen to what my mic picks up with the noise gate off when it comes to a keyboard. So I'm just gonna put my hands around the keyboard here, pretend to type a few things. You can hear things. Now I pick up my controller because I do play on controller. I'll even put it like under my desk here. And those are just normal clicks on the paddles in the back. Those are my joysticks I'm throwing around. So although it's not super loud, you can still hear it and that can be annoying to a viewer. Now let's do that again with a noise gate on. Oh, and just as we're talking here, my boiler room just turned on. So I'll see if you can hear that without the noise gate on. So now let's turn the noise gate on and see how much it helps. So. Right there, you can see audio levels are no longer bouncing when I'm not talking. And we go to type on our keyboard. I'm typing right now and you can't hear anything. Now, obviously when I'm talking now, it opens that gate so the keyboard might come through during those times. I'm gonna use my controller throwing my thumbsticks around. Nothing, it, it picks up nothing. So right there, this is like my one magical tool that I use to kind of make sure that I'm the only one coming through this microphone, no surrounding noises are being heard, and it's just an overall more enjoyable experience for everyone watching. So the second one we're going to talk about here, which is a pretty self-explanatory one. So I won't go too depth into it because it's very simple, but we're talking about the limiter and the limiter does exactly what it says and it limits your audio. Whatever you set this value to, it doesn't let your audio go over that certain amount of loudness. So right now I have mine set to negative eight. That right there, I feel like is a really good position for it to be in. And just to show you exactly how this works and give you a visual representation of it, I'm going to tap on my mic because I don't feel like screaming into it. So you can see with the limiter off, I'll turn it off here, that there is no limit to how high my audio can go all the way up to the highest value of zero. So I'll tap on it right now. You can see those peaks were going right up to zero and in a viewer's headset, if they're wearing one, especially if they're wearing a headset, that will blow out their eardrums and that's not what you want for a viewer because most likely they're gonna click off, they won't come back because you actually physically hurt them. <laughs> so 
In order to avoid this, we're putting on the limiter. So I turn that on right now. I'll tap it again. And you can see the highest it went is right up into this red, which is about where you want it to go. Obviously, you still want those hype moments, those if you're playing a scary game where you're screaming or something like that, you want it to get a little bit louder because it just emphasizes that moment. However, you don't want it going so loud that, like I said, you're bursting someone's eardrum. So I would keep this around negative eight to negative six. That's a good place for it to be to make sure your audio isn't super, super loud. And really that's all there is to that one. Now going into noise suppression. If you're in Streamlabs OBS, you'll have two options here. Keep it on speaks, it has lower CPU usage and it actually lets you adjust it to your liking. RN noise does not, it does it on its own and for my findings, it's not too good. So going back to speaks, I keep it around negative 12. I suggest this for you as well. And where this is similar to noise gate is that it does cut out sound. And when I explain it, it's gonna sound the same, but it's not. Noise gate cuts out all sound up to this value we set. Like I said, up to negative 30 dB, up to negative 30 loudness, noise doesn't get through. At 30 and above, then you start hearing things, any and all things. Noise suppression more deals with background noise. And what background noise is in the film or video industry is more of like your fans or your AC units or I have a boiler room pretty close. Those types of things are going to be what's involved in noise suppression. And because I'm not really in a loud room right now when it comes to fans and that kind of stuff, I don't really use this too often. So this is more specific to those people who have maybe an overhead fan or, uh, or a portable fan sat next to them during the summer gets hot or something like that, or an AC unit, then this might be more for those people. Uh, but just to show you how it works, um, it is going to be weird, but I'm just going to blow into my mic, uh, because I don't have a fan. So <clears throat> just don't look me in the eye when I do this and we'll get through it together. So I'm going to blow into my mic here and then I'm going to turn it on as I'm blowing into my mic and then you'll hear the kind of difference it makes. So first one, I'll do a kind of drastic one, like right up into the mic. <sighs> so you heard a difference between on and off. It doesn't cut out the sound. Like I said before, the noise gate is going to cut out the sound. This is more going to manage that background noise to where it's manageable to listen to. So, so I'll show you a little bit of a less drastic situation. Obviously, your, your, your fan is not going to be right into your mic. So I'm going to back up a little bit. And again, don't look me in the eye. So you heard the difference there. It, it honestly makes a drastic difference. And again, not cutting out completely. However, if you have an overhead fan or a, a mobile fan, like I mentioned, it's probably a good distance away from you and your mic. And it's not going to be as directional right in your mic and as dominant on your mic as me actually blowing on it is. Um, but Nonetheless, you hear the difference it makes, and if you're in that kind of situation where you have that kind of background noise, then this is probably a filter you definitely want to be using as well. Now that we've gone over all the technical things, and it can get way more technical, trust me, especially when it comes to audio, there's just so many things you can do with audio to make it sound just that much better. But remember, with any of these technical methods that we went over today with the noise gate, limiter, sound suppression, make sure you're not overdoing it. Like a lot of things in life, less is more. And that's especially true with audio. If you try to overwork it, your audio is just gonna sound super muddy, super gross, and it's not gonna sound good and appealing to your audience. So don't use the values I showed you in today's video as a set one and done rule of thumb, everyone should be using them. 
Your situation might be different than mine. Your voice probably carries different than mine. So let's play around with it and find good levels for your specific situation. Now, the last thing I want to talk about today, and this goes for most microphones out there, and it's another physical thing you can do just to make it sound that much better, and that is a pop filter. And what a pop filter is, is it's this thing right here. You can see I have over my mic. It's basically a mesh covering with foam on the inside under here. So that basically helps with those P sounds. It's not as hard to hear in your microphone. I can show you a difference with the on and off. It also helps a little bit with just overall noise in general, and it kind of just makes your voice come into the mic a little bit more smoothly. And so just to kind of show you what I'm talking about, I'm going to take this one off here. So here I have it off, and you can hear if I say pop, 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 pop filter, pop filter. I have a pop filter not on my microphone right now. So as you can probably hear, it picks up my voice a lot louder as well. And it probably doesn't sound as smooth as it did with the pop filter on. And without actually sliding it back on, I'm just going to hover over it. So as you can hear, pop, pop, pop filter, pop filter, pop, 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 pop filter, pop, pop, pop. Uh. So obviously those are extreme examples as most of my examples were today. And it's really important to go through extreme examples so you can really show and emphasize how well a certain technique works when it comes to demonstrations, especially with audio. So if your mic has one that's compatible with it, I highly advise going and getting a pop filter and place it so that way it is the barrier between your mouth and the actual microphone itself. So that way it gets the best results possible. Getting your audio right is super, super important, especially if you're a live streamer. Like I said at the beginning of this video, you can't go back in time once you're live to fix broken audio. You have to do the work on the front end to make sure it's sounding crisp and clean and clear so that your audience can have the best viewing experience possible. I've said this in videos before, audio will make or break your video audio will make or break your stream. And if you'd like to hear how crisp, clean, and clear my audio sounds while I'm live, be sure to check out one of my live streams here on this channel every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 6.30 p.m. Eastern and on, and also Saturday mornings. I've had a lot of new people come into my streams lately. The stream's growing every single day, and it's been super exciting, and uh, I would just like as many people to be a part of that as possible. I hope you guys learned something new. If there's something else audio related that you guys want to know about that you want me to make a video about, please leave it in the comments down below. Pass that. Catch you in the next one.